Welcome to the Multi Amory Podcast. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. We believe in looking to the future of relationships, not maintaining the status quo of the past. Whether you're monogamous, polyamorous, swinging, casually dating, or if you just do relationships differently, we see you and we're here for you. Hello, listeners. Today, we're going to bring you an interview that we did back in December of 2022 with our friend Sarah Sense of the Better in Bed podcast. This discussion today is all about jealousy and navigating jealousy in the context of relationships and non-monogamy. I think for years, the discourse around jealousy was always that like, if you felt it, it meant that something was wrong with your relationship or that that's a problem that you alone have to deal with and fix, especially in non-monogamous relationships. And I really think that those ideas are becoming a little antiquated and are really changing. So we get into some of that and we just have a really fun discussion with Sarah. This discussion was unique because it was not remote like how we usually do all of our podcast episodes. We actually recorded it all together around this really tiny table in the same room when we were all in Hong Kong where Sarah is based. So it has more of kind of a roundtable discussion feeling like friends at a dinner table talking to one another. I really like that about it. And it's super interesting getting to go back and listen to this discussion that happened over a year ago and kind of getting this little time capsule of where we were then and see the differences to where we are now. I really love this discussion. We had so much fun with Sarah when we were recording it, and we really hope that you enjoy the episode as well. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Better in Bed, the podcast where we talk about sex and inspire you to get better at it. I'm Sarah, and I'm a certified sexologist and coach, and I help people like you overcome shame, explore your sexuality, and communicate more meaningfully about sex. Now, if you're listening to this podcast and you love the tips and insights that we dish out regularly about sex, then you're really going to love my free audio guide called How to Get Better in Bed. Just go to my website, sarahsense.com and join my email community. You'll get the guide as well as some other resources that I don't share anywhere else but on email. A lot of you also ask me how you can support Better in Bed and I'm really proud to announce that Better in Bed is now on Patreon. So if you sign up, you'll be able to access exclusive bonus content for our podcast episodes, including this one. There's also fun polls, behind the scenes stuff, and also the option to ask me a question if you'd like to. Today, we're talking about dealing with jealousy. And I feel like jealousy is one of those really complex emotions that pretty much everyone has felt at some time or another. I definitely have. And sometimes jealousy is fleeting, but sometimes it can also make you feel pretty yuck and small inside. Jealousy is particularly prevalent in relationships, whether they're sexual or romantic. So I put up a poll on my Instagram account, Hello Sarah Sense, on this topic. And 11% of you said you felt jealousy often. 39% of you said sometimes. And 50% of you said rarely or never at all. So I guess that's kind of split pretty much down the middle. A few more points I found interesting. A majority of you, 60%, said jealousy was a red flag for you when you're dating someone. But only 13% of you said you'd ever broken up with someone because of jealousy. So it's a red flag, but not a deal breaker. And I guess that comes down to how you're dealing with jealousy in a relationship. Our guests today are going to give us some tools and strategies to deal with jealousy in a healthy way. And I'm so, so excited to welcome them onto the podcast because I have been a avid follower of their podcast for quite a while. And I often recommend this podcast to my friends as well. So I want to introduce Jace Dedeker and Emily from the Multi Amory podcast. Multi Amory offers support and advice for modern relationships, such as polyamory and other non traditional relationships. Their podcast has over 400 episodes. 
including some great episodes on managing jealousy. And I think they now also have a book with the same name. (laughs) (laughs) So Jay Stedica and Emily, welcome to Better in Bed. Oh, thank you so much for having us. It's so great to be here. It's so great to be recording in person in Hong Kong with you. Such a rarity in this day and age. Absolutely. I feel so lucky to have you guys here. So maybe you could introduce yourselves a little to it everyone listening and maybe say a little bit more about your relationship dynamic, why you started the Multi-Amory podcast. Yeah. So we've been doing the podcast now for about eight years, a little over eight years now. And when we started the podcast, it was because the three of us were polyamorous. All three of us were in a relationship with each other as well as, as other people. And I had this brilliant idea of <laughs> <laughs> so brilliant. <laughs> let's let's make a podcast about this because at the time there really weren't a lot of podcasts out there. There was really only one polyamory podcast out there at the time, which was Polyamory Weekly, and we just thought that there was a, a need for more of this information and content, especially for people who were a little bit younger than those other podcasts were at the time. And it's funny now, eight years later, that there's a lot of other polyamory podcasts and non-monogamy podcasts out there. And at the same time, our relationship dynamics have changed and our show has broadened to include more than just polyamory, that we talk a lot about monogamy as well, if it's intentional and conscious or about asexual relationships or you know various other ways relationships can look like queer platonic friendships or things like that. Yeah. That has been a really funny thing about running the podcast is in 2014 when we first started it. Yeah. It felt like such a different landscape online in particular, you know, it did feel like, well, we're going to be the one other non-monogamy podcast. (laughs) And I do feel like at least what I saw around 2015, 2016, there was this big explosion of other content creators of, of people, even just regular people feeling comfortable to say in their social media profiles, yeah, I'm non-monogamous or I'm polyamorous or I'm a swinger or whatever it is. And (laughs) I don't know, funnily enough, like there's this app that, you know, incidentally app that Jason and I both use called Coral, where now this app is like, have you considered opening up your relationship? We're going (laughs) to teach you about what you should talk about. And so I'm just like, wow, it's like really kind of gotten into the culture, at least into American culture in a particular way that's so different from when we first started. Yeah, I think our relationship in general as it stands now is super non-traditional as well, because we did used to all date each other and that was non-traditional in and of itself. And yet now we're I mean, I'm no longer in a relationship with the two of them, but they're still in a relationship with one another. And we run a business together and are best friends and really close. And I think in a lot of ways, an emotional triad. And that is super unique simply because very many people, I I don't think very many people out there really want to hang out with their exes and want to be around them as much anymore and stuff like that. And and we decided like, let's create a business together and do that. So yeah. it's unique in and of itself. Yeah. Within the first year of the podcast, we, I mean, we went through this big relationship collapse because we were initially in a quad together. There was a, a you know, a fourth partner who was involved and all of us were also dating other people. And you know, within a year, there was this huge upset of our relationships and multiple breakups happened and lots of drama. And we still were like, I guess we'll keep recording this podcast together, you know, even in the midst of some extremely difficult things happening and difficult emotions. And, you know, I I mean, still sitting down to record, even when some relationship has broken up like a week before, right. You know, like a lot of really, really intense stuff. And somehow I think, I don't know, somehow we got through it. And I think came out the other side of that just much better and stronger and closer than I think any of us were, even when we were dating. It's definitely the most unique dynamic of my life, but I could not imagine my life without it for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's something to be said for working your way through your relationships by researching and then talking about relationships every week for eight years. (laughs) It definitely is helpful. Yeah. 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 But also very vulnerable in some ways. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you're also experiencing the things yeah. <laughs> that you need the tools for yeah. in some ways. 
Yeah. And often it's a, you know, do what I say, not what I do scenario. <laughs> um, you realize like there's a practical application versus just reading about something or researching it. And the difference is huge. And actually being able to go out and do that thing that you've been talking about for that particular week or talking about for years, even it's more challenging than it may seem. Oh, absolutely. It's also the kind of thing that I've run into with newer partners, partners who I'm not podcasting with. Uh, that's too, difficult, I, too. You yeah. Know, yeah, Can as, they be part of the podcast but, as well? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you wish they were. Yeah. Well, well, but it's the kind of thing where it's like, to me, this feels like a chosen family relationship that is really important because we end up spending a lot of time together just working, right? And so when new people, I think, come into the scene, new people that we're dating, um, sometimes that can be challenging, right? To explain how important this working relationship mm -hmm. is and how sometimes that even takes priority, right? Which is a good segue back to jealousy, which oh, is the topic oh of this episode. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, let's talk about that. Sure, and, yeah. And kudos for you, by by the way, that the entire journey that you've been on and to where you are. But I'm sure there must have been some difficult bits and Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And maybe you can share with people if you did feel jealous, you know, and mm -hmm. your own personal experiences as well. I'm sure people would love to hear about them. So let's just start basics. What is jealousy to start with? You have like a very specific, <laughs> like, I think, idea of what jealousy is and versus envy and things along those lines. And I think that's evolved over year over the years. Yeah, when we first started talking about this, we focused more on that difference between jealousy and envy. And so just to recap that real quick, basically it's that envy is I want something that someone else has. And jealousy is this I'm afraid of losing something that I have because it's going to get taken away from me. And we focused more on that at first. And I still see some people really focus on that when they post online. But really when it comes down to it, what matters is how we actually use the word and think about the concept. And so we tend to use now just jealousy to describe all of that. Because actually in the definitions for jealousy, it does actually Envy sort of include in both. Yeah. So it's, it's something that we've loosened up a little bit on that distinction at least. So I rope in a slightly different nuance to it, especially since I'm working with clients, right? I see jealousy as it's something that shows up and it's trying to show you something or it's trying to tell you something. Like I think it's sort of the first maybe red flag that comes up or it's, or it's really more like a sign pointing you in a different direction. It's pointing you towards something, right? Either something that I'm not getting in my relationship, something that I'm longing for from a partner or from my life, some sort of insecurity that I've been holding or some sort of wound or some sort of trauma that needs healing. You know, so with my clients, when jealousy comes up, a lot of our work is actually getting underneath, well, what's actually underneath here, right? You know, it's, I find it's very rarely just as simple as like, oh, you're just jealous or you're just a jealous person and that's it, right? It's pointing you toward something, you know? So I think in more recent years, I've come to see jealousy as uh, <laughs> maybe the most positive thing I could say about it is like, it's your benevolent protector, just trying to tell it's a you data point, if but, nothing else, yes, if nothing yeah. else, it, it's a data point, right? Yeah. It's trying to give you some kind of information. And so your work, I think is figuring out what is the information that it's highlighting? And then what do I do with that information? Okay. But don't you feel like sometimes jealousy is also, there's so much in jealousy, right? And and sometimes it's hard for me as well um, to even define what is jealousy because there's fear, there's anger, there's disappointment. There's, I mean, there's just so many sort of faces to it. That's a great way to put it. Something we've talked about a lot before is that jealousy is this word that we use for this kind of a whole group of feelings, like you're saying, all these different things, right? There's fear, there's insecurity, there's sometimes just anger or there's desire or there's all sorts of things. And yeah, it's that the thing we usually ask people when they talk to us about jealousy is, okay, tell me more about what you're feeling. You know, what's actually going on? What's really here? Because just saying jealousy is not helpful. It's like the starting point. It's like, like Dedeker said, it's that 
oh, here's a little indicator that something's going on. So then the question is, well, what's actually the thing that's going on? And I feel like so often it's less about the thing that's externally occurring and more about what's internally happening within you. And that can mean a variety of things. Like if I'm non-monogamous and I see a partner going out and doing a fun new thing with a, another, with my metamor, with another partner, that may trigger something within me. But is it actually the acts that they're doing or rather something that I'm longing for that I'm hoping for instead? Like, I would love to be able to have new experiences with my partner. And I feel like we've gotten kind of into mundane more. I'm going to hang out on the couch with you and do the same thing every single night. And, and it feels triggering in some way to watch my partner have a fun new time with their other partner. So that more is an internal thing. And I think that's so often the thing that we have to look at. And that's the challenging part, right? Because we would rather blame it on someone else or say, you know, you're the problem, not I'm the one who needs to really look inward and ask myself, what is it that that I'm really wanting here and that I really want to change potentially about something that's occurring? Yeah. And what I'm noticing already is that the way you guys are talking about jealousy is that it sounds like you, you're you just accepting it and normalizing it as a very healthy part of a relationship. However, I don't know if a lot of people feel that way about jealousy because I, I think if you told them, oh, have you ever felt jealousy? They would feel, oh God, and it's <laughs> bad and painful yeah, and sure. feels awful and they don't want it. And it's, you know, generally negative, actually. Well, I mean, what's your take on that? And how have you sort of reframed it? Um, yeah, like you know, I yeah. think that is apt because I do think that if anything that being non-monogamous has taught me, I think it is reducing the fear of feeling jealous. Like I do think there is a normalizing process going on. I think that in very traditional relationships, the expectation is like to feel romantic jealousy is such a bad feeling that we both need to go through every possible strategy we can to avoid any exposure to romantic jealousy. Right. So, you know, Read and that's all the books, do all the things. Well, it's yeah. like that you yeah. can't even look at someone else. Don't look at someone else. Don't compliment someone else. Someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. even don't even have friends of the gender that is the most threatening to me, sure. yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And I will say it's not that I'm, into feeling jealousy. It doesn't feel good. Like I don't look forward to feeling it, but I know that when I'm feeling it, there's not those same alarm bells going off of like, Oh God, this means it's a bad relationship. If you're feeling any jealousy whatsoever, or the alarm bells that are saying, Oh God, if you're feeling jealousy, it must be telling you the truth about a relationship. So I guess there is that particular flavor there. I think one distinction worth making is the difference between feeling some kind of jealousy and and what I would call it. doing jealousy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And when when we think about all of the terrible things associated with jealousy, at least in my opinion, it's less about just the feeling itself and it's more about all the suffering that's caused. Or the restrictions upon another person. Right, like all the results of people feeling yeah. jealousy and trying not to, right? So it's like mm. killing someone in a jealous rage um, at the sure. extreme end, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Or that like you can't talk to that person or I'm going to monitor everything you do because I'm jealous. Or it's like that's what people see and go, yikes, jealousy equals bad. Sure. Yeah. But it's the behavior that's bad. Mm-hmm. So I, mm-hmm. I would maybe say one way to think about it is feeling jealousy is okay, but doing jealousy or, you know, kind of acting out on the jealousy is not okay. Yeah. And that's why people go, no. And I do think something I've noticed in recent years is I do think when I was much younger and especially when I was first trying out non-monogamy, I was very much in that camp of, oh my God, if someone I'm dating displays jealousy, they are out. That's a red flag. Don't want to mm-hmm. deal with that. Um, For all you polyamorous pers- people out there, <laughs> like newer polyamorous people, just, yeah, it's going to be okay. Like <laughs> yeah. Jealousy is going to happen and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so what I've noticed in recent years is I actually feel more open to having partners who express their jealousy to me because mm-hmm. I think I've had more experiences with partners who can express jealousy, but it doesn't automatically mean they're going to act jealous and restrict me. Mm -hmm. You know, they can be vulnerable to say, Hey, this is really challenging or, 
hey, you know, I want to be the best at sex, (laughs) you know, and like, and that's my thing, but it doesn't automatically translate to, and therefore that means you better not have sex with anybody else, or you better not talk to me about your other partners. Right. Right. And so or I'm saying this to you to try to get you to, you know, stop doing that. To restrict you in some way. Yeah. Yeah. So I do think in recent years, my relationship to my partner's jealousy has become almost more positive of like, Oh, oh, geez. Well, shucks, <laughs> you know, uh, almost kind of cute because it's, I think it's uncoupled from the behavior and the restrictions. Mm-hmm. Like it's more about being vulnerable and admitting yeah. some, some yes. fear. Yeah. Very interesting. I think many people assume that if you're in some kind of open or poly arrangement, you just don't ever feel jealous. Whereas clearly <laughs> you guys are saying that, no, you do. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I'm probably. <laughs> and, and maybe that's a misconception, right? But I, I again, like I think there are lots of people who are maybe in more traditional relationships where they're like, oh, okay, these people in poly relationships, they've, they've Zen mastered <laughs> jealousy. <laughs> right? Don't I wish. Of polyamorous yeah. people like to think that way about themselves <laughs> sure. as well. But okay. yeah. It's not an issue. But I guess like, what are your personal experiences with feeling jealous and has it ever impacted any of your relationships? Gosh, who's going to go first? Yeah, (laughs) I'll I'll go first. I'm not in a polyamorous relationship right now. Mm -hmm. I'm with a partner that I've been with for about eight years that we met around the time that this podcast was becoming a thing. Um, so you started out polyamorous with them. Correct. And during that time, I was shocked and surprised at the amount of jealousy that I felt. And usually it manifested in, I saw women that he was dating that I felt perhaps like intellectually inferior to, for instance, and that was, you know, it, they would read poetry together, maybe <laughs> as a, as a, for instance. Yeah. And that, um, definitely was really difficult for me and surprising in that way that I, I just didn't expect to feel that because I, I had done this show for a number of years and really thought that I had mastered that side you of myself. You thought you had Zen mastered yeah, it. Zen for mastered sure. It, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it was <laughs> shocking to realize that that wasn't necessarily the case. Mm. And so, yeah, I think it, I definitely did not always handle it in the best way, especially when that might've been six years ago or something now. And I would cry and be upset and, and then eventually be like, well, you also have some good qualities and just calm the fuck down. That was the challenging thing from time to time to realize, yes, I'm going to feel things because it's human to feel things and we're allowed to do that. But if we act upon it, if we can cause our, or I'm sorry, calm our physiological response and be able to move in a direction of what am I learning from this? What am I feeling internally that's going to get me perhaps to a better place eventually instead of acting upon it in a irrational way? Yeah. Yeah. But, oh yeah, I felt it. (laughs) I felt it with the two of them too. I mean, the two of you rather. Yes. And that that's a whole other thing, but you can you can talk first if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I would just say simply that yeah, it comes up now and again. I would say for me in recent years, I would say in the last I don't know six years or so, it's hasn't come up strongly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think starting out, and also we were just kind of in a more tumultuous time in our own relationships being a little bit newer. So they're a little, a little less safe feeling yet. I think there's feeling more secure in your relationship helps alleviate some of that jealousy. But I would say in the last probably six years or so, it's been, I haven't had any experiences of it being really intense, that, that intense kind of freak out feeling of it, but it'll be like hints of it that'll show up where it's like, okay, I'm feeling like I feel this weird threat or something from, you know, maybe some other relationship that Dedeker had. And then it would be that question of, okay, what is it really? Is it that I wish I was dating more? Mm, No, no, I don't think it's that just as an example, right? It's just, okay, no, maybe it's not that. Is it that I feel like she's having more sex than I am? Is it that I want to be having more sex? I'm like, yeah, maybe that's it. And it's like, well, know, maybe it's not that. You know, it's, <laughs> so it's kind of that that questioning of what is it actually that I'm 
not getting enough of or or that I'm wishing I had more of or kind of like Emily was saying, is it just that I'm feeling like I'm not good enough? And yeah. so then it's like, okay, maybe Which I should big one. think about that. Yeah. So for me, it, it tends to show up that way of as soon as I start to feel that feeling, it's like, okay, what's, what is it that I'm actually wishing I had more of? Actually, one other thing I did want to throw out there that was a big revelation for me a few years ago is about sex, actually. And it's about jealousy about your partner seeming like they're having more or maybe better sex than you. And that, you know, it's you can never really know that, right? If you're not the one having the sex, you can't... If you're not witnessing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can't really know that. And, and in terms of how much it is, often you don't really know all the details of that either. And it's it's complicated, but... The thing I discovered for me was that there was also this piece of feeling. And I think for me, part of this was, is being a man and kind of Mm -hmm. being socialized with that. But it's that if I'm not having as much sex as my partner, or I'm not having what I consider a lot of it, then I'm failing somehow. Like failing as a man in particular. Right. That there's kind of this social idea that as a man, if I'm having more sex, that means I'm also worth more and I'm more desirable and and all of this stuff that we get from that. And so kind of when I gave that example before of really getting down to, is it actually that I want to be having more sex? I started kind of seeing, no, actually I'm, I feel pretty good on that front. And you know, there are some times like recently where it's like, yeah, actually having some more sex with some new people would be fun. Yeah. But a lot of the times I realized it was actually just kind of my pride or my socializing your internal socializing yeah yeah that made me feel like i should be doing this more and if i'm not i'm failing somehow so that's just something i want to throw out there in case that's helpful to someone else who might be listening is jealousy a sign of love i love that question (laughs) so a few years ago when we were doing the research for our attachment styles episode we found that the mainstream school of thought is that jealousy is a sign of a secure attachment, which is so interesting. So most of the research on attachment styles has been done either on parents and children, you know, that was the foundation of creating attachment theory or on mostly monogamous couples. And so I remember first reading this and us being like, what? That's (laughs) bullshit. Like really? Like that can't be true. And I think that my thought has changed a lot on that over the years. So initially it was like, yeah, but I know all of these non-monogamous people in relationship who don't feel jealousy and clearly are very secure. So it's not that jealousy has to be present in order to indicate that there's a secure relationship. But now I think I've realized that it's not that people in loving, secure, attached relationships never feel jealous. But I do think there is something about feeling safe enough to be vulnerable Mm. about that jealousy, Mm. you know? Mm. To even know that it's occurring. Yeah. And so is it a sign of love? I will say, I think it's a sign that there's some stakes here for you in the relationship. I don't Mm. think that this applies to necessarily 100% of relationships because I do think there can be like horrible pathological Mm -hmm. jealousy. There can be jealousy that's very abusive, that's very controlling. You know, I think there can be people with unresolved issues that manifests as extreme, terrible jealousy in a relationship. But I would, if I exclude that, and I would say like most people's kind of garden variety, everyday jealousy again, to go back to my whole thing of like jealousy is pointing towards something. I think often it's pointing towards like this relationship is important to you Hmm. in some way, whether it's important as in this is the person I've been with for 20 years and I want to be with them for 20 years more and I'm scared that they're not going to be there. And so that's what the jealousy is pointing you towards. Or if it's like, this is my hookup and I really enjoy the sex and I'm just scared that maybe they'll think someone else is sexier than I am and not want to have sex with me. Right. So, so I don't know if I would say that it's automatically a sign of love. I think for most people it's a sign that there's something important here for you. That's my take. I do want to just say though, that there is this romanticization of jealousy Yes, correct. in a way that we should potentially caution against. And that is a very mainstream view in my mind that people tend to say jealousy equals love. Mm -hmm. 
that I want somebody who is so into me that if I look at another person, they're going to be super jealous of that. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to try to make them yeah. mad. Yeah. Or I'm going to, exactly. Or I'm going to play some games to be jealous, you know, to make them jealous in some form or fashion. And that's not what we're talking about. I would hope. Yeah. I think it's more along the lines of, If you feel jealousy, how are we going to act upon it? What are we going to do internally? What kind of work are we going to look at in terms of, am I upset about this thing? Is this triggering a feeling that I had back when I was a kid because my father withheld emotion from me or whatever it might be? And I think those things, as we've said, are the things to really look at. And that's okay within a relationship, but... But true, like jealousy equals love is probably not it's where not I that would go. Simple. No, it's yeah. not that simple. And yeah. that's reducing it to something that's maybe not healthy. And one other piece that we haven't quite mentioned yet is that when jealousy is coming up, it might be a sign that something is wrong. That's true. Mm, yes. Right. hundred yes. percent. So in that example of kind of that, oh, I, I want my partner to feel jealous because that's how I know they care. And maybe you're doing shitty stuff to them to make them feel bad if they're feeling that jealousy on their side or maybe you are just doing something bad right exactly exactly that that on their side it might be like yeah i'm feeling jealous i don't feel like i should but i'm feeling jealous it's like there is also the possibility that it's telling you yeah my partner is not being cool Mm -hmm. right my partner is kind of uh, either intentionally hurting me or just being negligent of my yeah, feelings, not giving me what I need. withholding information, any of the above. Yeah. Right. So, so again, t- again, to go back but to it's this pointing idea, you towards it's pointing something. You to that's true. Yeah. It's something. It still is information. It's information, right. and yes. that's that is a good thing. And because, it's, yeah, yeah, it's very possible that the thing it's pointing you toward is yeah, this relationship actually isn't safe, and that's why you feel threatened in this relationship. So that's also a possibility. Yeah, I will say that I think in what I consider to be my first like actually polyamorous relationship as in the first relationship I was in where it was very emotionally attached and my partner had another like emotionally important relationship. I felt so much jealousy. And again, it was after I'd already been in open relationships for several years and I was like, what is wrong with me? Why is this happening? And I really beat myself up a lot in that relationship over feeling jealous When the reality is that partner was being super shitty, was like Mm -hmm. lying to both Mm -hmm. people, was like really not being ethical, really not being honest, really not meeting the things that I needed. And so at least the jealous feelings were completely justified. Some of my behavior maybe was not the greatest, but the feelings, I think, again, were pointing me towards, hey, there's something not right in this relationship. There's a way that your needs are not being met. Before we get back to the discussion, we want to take a quick break to talk about how you can support this show. Honestly, the biggest way you can help this show is by becoming a patron. And our patrons are the best. They're amazing. I love our community. Our Discord server is... Now, I will tell you, I'm a member of probably 30 different Discord servers. But the one that by far has the best community, the most supportive, the most interesting different channels of discussion that are being updated every day is the Multi-Amory Discord. And sure, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but it really is amazing. It's a fantastic community to be part of. And you can do that by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash multiamory, or you can go to multiamory.com slash join to get redirected there and you can learn about all the different tiers and all the really cool benefits that we have for people who help support this show. In addition to that, we do have sponsors on this show because it's important to us that this show is also available to everybody out there for free so that they can get this information if it's helpful to them. And so to do that, just take a moment, listen to our sponsors. If any are interesting to you, check them out. That really does directly help support our show to help us keep this show going and spreading out into the universe. Okay, guys. Well, you know, one of the things I actually really love about the multi Amory podcast is that you guys give so many practical tools and frameworks to people. And so I'm going to ask you, what are some of your top tools to help deal with jealousy in a healthy way? Hmm. Well, I'm so glad you asked. (laughs) We did just record two episodes. It was a two-parter, 50 different ways to handle jealousy. So if people want to go check that out, that's Multi-Amory episodes 394 and 395. 
it's hard to pick my favorites from that <laughs> list. But I will say the first things that come to mind, like if I was just suddenly to have a jealousy spike right now in this moment, probably the first tool I would whip out is what's known as mind mapping, which is sitting down with a piece of paper. You can get as many art supplies as you like. And what I like to do is literally just kind of like artistically draw out a map of everything that's going through my mind in that moment. So it can be things like, oh, it's bringing up this memory of this time in my relationship. And that's like a spiky storm cloud or whatever. And I'm going to write in kind of what the memories are and the feelings. But then also it's bringing up weirdly some feelings of compersion and actually joy that my partner's having a good time. And so this is kind of like a pink fluffy cloud over here, but then it's bringing up like all these questions that I have about the situation in the future. Like these are the anxiety questions that are coming up. And I really like that just to get all my thoughts outside of myself and to kind of have a sense of all the different moving pieces that are happening there. I would say that would probably be the first thing I would reach for. Hmm. And if so it was right now, what does that do? It just helps you deconstruct all of the yes. sort of complexities and the many different things that yeah. are encompassed within jealousy. And then it gives me a starting point for a conversation with my partner, potentially, if it feels appropriate to share it with my partner, where I can be like, yeah, so I had these feelings that came up and it, it reminded me of this time. But then also I had these questions, but then also I also feel actually joyful and happy, you know, that I get to more accurately express what my inner life is instead of just in the moment, as soon as the jealousy spike comes up, it's just like the first thing that pops into my brain comes out my mouth. Right. Mm, mm, I love that. One that I found on our long, long list, <laughs> I was a therapist dump, which I really love because I actually started therapy not too terribly long ago after many years of trying to figure out, am I going to do this? Am I not? And if you have the privilege to be able to meet with a therapist or even a very, very trusted friend in some way to be able to speak with them about what's going on internally before and maybe in place of dumping all of this on your partner and kind of getting it out in the open in a way and maybe getting some feedback I think is really powerful and a really great tool to do, especially because when we're in the midst of maybe an intense you know, moment of jealousy, we may not act or speak in a manner that is as appropriate as it should be, especially towards our partner. And I think if we can do that first with somebody who is trusted and who may even be able to help uh, in a really productive way, then that's ideal. That's so interesting because I think intuitively you would just think, oh, my partner needs yeah, to know that's this, all. Yeah, right. you know. But a third party, I think, can be really helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to give a couple. So one okay. one is if you're someone who likes to really kind of logic your way through things and do like if, if the idea of doing some worksheets sounds fun, <laughs> or nice to you, which you kind of like <laughs> uh, sometimes, right? It depends on kind of how I'm feeling. But uh, there's one by Kathy Labriola called The Jealousy Workbook. And then also one by Kitty Chambliss called The Jealousy Workbook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look for that, both of those are nice kind of structured ways that you could go through it. But then for something totally different is the big thing for me is sleeping more. Mm. Is that so, so many of the times when I'm just feeling like I can't handle these feelings, I'm overwhelmed, I'm feeling sad and I don't know why, or I'm feeling threatened and I don't know why. I've, I've learned comes down to that I'm not getting enough sleep and it's just so important for our mental health. And I know it's not always easy to do, especially right now while we're in Hong Kong, I'm getting up at 4.30 AM every day for my work because <laughs> it's in the U S and so I have to overlap with that time zone. Uh, and so it's hard to do that. But just, just last night, I think I said to Dedeker, I'm like, I'm feeling sad. And she's like, why is that? I was like, I think it's because I'm tired. She said, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> and so just kind of self-care, I would say, is part of that, right? So it's not just am I sleeping enough, but also it's am I 
getting exercise if that's something that makes me feel better? Am I having fun? Am I doing something besides working all the time or besides going on dates all the time? Am I doing other things that are relaxing and fun and make me feel good about myself? So I'd say kind of self-care with an emphasis on sleep. Yeah, wow. That that reminds me of like this moment in time for me right now that I am on this contract. The reason I'm in Hong Kong is that I get to be on a performance contract at Hong Kong Disneyland. And I definitely like internally feel some of the best that I felt about myself in a really long time. And I think that's huge because there are times when we're so vulnerable and wounded and internally not at our best just because of our external circumstance. And I think that's so true that it can be something as small and slight as like, I'm not getting enough sleep. I'm not working out as much as I maybe want to be or whatever. I didn't get enough food today, you know, things along those lines. But I think it, it, it can be bigger and more global that maybe our circumstance needs to change in a, in a larger way. And definitely right now, like my, my faculties emotionally, I think are really high because I feel good about myself Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's not always the case. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. so I'm more, I have the potential to lash out more at a partner or be in a worse mood just simply because I don't feel as good about myself. And I think that's big. That's a big thing to really look at at a global level. Yeah. And the same incident that can trigger jealousy, if you're in a good place. Yeah. A hundred percent. you've slept well, you've yes. eaten well, mm-hmm. you're not yes. tired. That you can just sort of handle it. You can just yes. kind of brush yeah, it's it like, off. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You're like, yeah, that's good. But when you are already in that yeah. sort of like you're worn down and you're drained. But then- I love that because <laughs> it, it takes it more down to a granular level and it realizes that like, it's a fleeting moment in time. It's not something that's going to be forever. And it's not something that's even like true, quote unquote, like it just is in that particular second of your life or whatever. Maybe it lasts for a while, but it's not it it doesn't always have to be because in another moment you may be feeling better and you may be able to handle it better. So let's say I am feeling jealous and I want to talk to my partner about it. What are the do's and don'ts with regards to starting this conversation? Yeah. Yes. So I always recommend that people use I statements. Uh, (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a very couples therapist thing Mm -hmm, to do. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that's fundamental where it lands very differently if you approach your partner saying, I'm having some really difficult feelings coming up about the fact that you went and had tea with this other person (laughs) versus you went and had tea and you made me jealous and you completely disregarded my feelings and you didn't think about me at all. Right. And you may be feeling that way, right? Like it doesn't mean that if you feel that way, that that's wrong, but it's just, it's really about, what you're needing in that moment, most likely what you're needing is to be heard and to be received and to be comforted by your partner. And so if you can at least shift to using statements that describe you and describe your needs and your actions, it's going to increase the chances that your partner is going to be able to hear you and receive you in that moment instead of just hearing criticism and attack, which is most likely uh, to result in like a defensive response right Mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Yeah. I would say another thing to think about for that is communicating at times when you're not feeling the jealousy as much. So for for a lot of people, we only bring something up that's maybe a little uncomfortable with our partner when we're right in the heat of it, right? And so it's right as you're about to go out on a date or it's as we're trying to get to bed tonight and you have to work tomorrow because you were on a date yesterday and like it's on my mind now and I'm upset right now and so I need to talk about it now. And while there is some value in addressing things as they come up, having some kind of time set aside in advance, and we're big advocates of having a regular check-in for Mm, your relationships, mm -hmm. but having that time to talk about it when you're not right in the heat (laughs) of being upset is helpful for two big reasons. One is just 
you have more of your faculties about you. But two is that having it set in advance means that like for me, when stuff comes up, sometimes I go, oh, I'm like, I'm annoyed about this. I'm frustrated about this. But you know what? I know that we have our time set aside in a couple of weeks. So this isn't so uh, so bad that I need to talk about it right this second. I'll, I'll wait a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll even make a note for myself. I'll ri- you know, write in my journal on my phone or on paper or whatever and say, okay, this is what I'm feeling. I'm so mad that she did this thing Aww. or whatever. And really often I'll get to that a week or two weeks later or whenever it is that we have that time set aside and I'll read back through my notes. I'm like, yeah, I mean, mm, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it, but I don't feel like I did then. And so it also helps you know I'm going to get to this. So I don't need to stress about talking about it right now when I'm the most upset. Hmm. I, yeah, I just do want to throw out the acronym HALT, which we talk mm. about a lot. Hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. And we also threw in drunk into that one or <laughs> drugs or, it, you know. Yeah, sick. Exactly. Sick, sick yeah. is in there. Yeah. And just if if you were any of those things, potentially you're not going to be feeling at your best. So perhaps stop the conversation and deal with those things before you come back to them. And I think that applies in jealous situations as well, not just, you know, fights or whatever, but whatever it's about, especially if you are feeling super jealous, maybe take a minute, like calm your physiological response and then come back to the issue at hand. And what about some tips for the receiving partner of this conversation? Because I'm going to tell you my own personal experiences. I think very similar to you, Dedeker, I used to have a lot of issues with people, partners who were jealous, who would come and tell me about it. And I get so annoyed and frustrated with them. I'd be like, why, why aren't you over this? Like, why, aren't, huh. mm. why aren't you more evolved than this? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. tips for the receiving partner of this conversation. Yeah, I would say... I mean, this isn't just on the receiving partner, but, you know, so first of all, anything that you can do to just listen openly and compassionately, you know, listen first without rushing to being defensive, like really bring your curiosity, right? Like, I think your curiosity needs to be your first first foot forward of just really trying to understand where your partner is coming from and what they're feeling, right? Right. That's not always easy to do. Again, it helps if you're not hungry, angry, lonely, <laughs> tired, drunk, Drug, mm-hmm. drugs, mm-hmm. drugs, sick, any of those things. Yeah. Um, and then I think the next most important part of the conversation is, again, bringing that curiosity about what's the purpose in your partner telling you about this, right? Is it just that they just want you to know? They just want to be heard. It's just important for you to know that they're feeling this way. Is it that they just want reassurance and comfort and love? You know, is it, they just want you to tell them that you still think they're hot or, (laughs) you know, or is it, are they asking for something specific? You know, is like, are they asking you to not hang out with this person anymore? Are they asking, Hey, I would like for you to flirt with me in that same way. Or, Hey, I would like us to also go out on this particular type of date. Right. So I think that's the best thing that I can offer to the receiving. And of course, if your partner comes in like a wrecking ball, like really (laughs) aggressive and really critical, it can be really hard Mm -hmm. to do that and be compassionate. And so, I mean, if you're with a partner who's constantly coming in that way, there may be some other issues to address, but if that's not the case, yeah, I think like lead with curiosity, I would say. Yeah, I think that's great. I think there's not a lot more than one can ask for, but that, and I think, yeah, if you, are also feeling super energized and anxious and intense in that moment because of this information, then perhaps give yourself a moment. Yeah. 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 Once you hear it. Yeah. yeah, Because so many of us just like react immediately upon hearing something and we don't give ourselves time to process. And it's important to do that if we can. Yeah. And if you have a lot of past experience in relationships of, my partner expresses jealousy and that means they're asking me to do something. That means they're trying to control me in some way. You know, I've definitely, I know this is true about myself. This is true about a lot of the people that I've worked with that can kind of preload that response yeah. to not want to listen. But we're and all yeah. individual and we need to realize that mm-hmm. our relationships are as well. Mm-hmm. As difficult mm-hmm. as that is. Yeah. Hmm. So on the Instagram poll that I actually put up about 
this jealousy topic, I did ask my followers the question, can feeling some jealousy be erotic for you? And 62% of people said yes. yes. Wow. Yeah, I was yeah. going to guess. That would be my <laughs> guess. Sure, That's actually sure. a slight majority. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. So this leads me into my next question. Why am I turned on by jealousy? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you, Sarah, turned on by jealousy? <laughs> well, I, it could be me. I would like to know the answer to this as well. But this... this Um, question is from one of my followers. So why am I turned on by jealousy? Sometimes I fantasize about my partner sleeping with other women and it's hot because I feel mildly jealous. But I'm not sure I would really like this to happen in real life. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Response. Oh, gosh, I mean, <laughs> there's there's so much there and it's it's awesome. I mean, I, I, love, I love that the listener is able to even see that and say that and understand what's going on. There's a bunch of pieces there. So what so, is going on? <laughs> yeah, right. but why? Sure. So why is so, this such a turn on? First of all, first of all, this is something <laughs> that um, who is it? Uh, Doctor Ryan. What's his oh, first? Oh, Ryan name? Witherspoon. No. Oh, Christopher. Last, Christopher, Christopher Ryan. Christopher Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> two two first names. <laughs> two different in one Dr. name. Ryan's. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor Christopher Ryan loves to talk about this a lot about studies where one of the most popular. Um, popular uh, searches for porn for men is uh, like gangbangs or multiple men with one woman, which mm. in our normal day-to-day relationships, most men don't want other men with the woman that they're dating. Uh, again, I'm assuming heterosexual men here because that's the, who this who this data was about. Uh, but he likes to bring that up a lot to talk about how there's this kind of maybe competitiveness or jealousness that feeds into getting turned on testosterone like, production right, testosterone <laughs> production. production it's like yeah. oh yeah but i'm gonna do her so much better and put so many more oh, babies in her or whatever Ew, <laughs> what? Ew, what? all of a sudden the women are like what? <laughs> yeah i know uh, yeah totally but but i think that this is not actually something that's unique to to heterosexual men at all mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. That, that there is something there about this like mm, but like this thing's great because i know other people want it And so mm. now I want it, right? It's the oh, same yeah. reason why we buy the newest iPhone or whatever, or, right? It's yeah, like- or why people are like, <laughs> you said this earlier that, oh, you're a little jealous of me? Like, oh, that's kind of cute. Like, yeah. oh, I, like, I kind of yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, that mm. it happens kind of in that fashion. Yeah, I, I think about um, the work of Esther Perel. Mm. She talks a lot about how, particularly in long-term relationship, what feeds desire is like, we do want to feel close and we want to feel safe, but also we need distance as mm. well in order to feel desire. Yeah, like, there's a sex in us to that. Yeah, so so it doesn't necessarily have to be, I want my partner to be gangbanged or, oh. right. or it doesn't necessarily have to be, I want my partner to have sex with other people, but it could be my partner just having a separate social life, having other hobbies, having other passions. And the way that I think about it is that it's almost like we like having their, having a runway that we can pursue along because the pursuit mm. is sexy. The sense of distance is sexy. So I suspect it may be some of mm. that. Again, normalizing the fact that we can fantasize about things and get turned on by things that we just don't actually want in real life. And that's totally fine. That's a very common part of the human experience, I think. Mm. Yes. And that's the piece I wanted to come back sure, to. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. I think it's really astute of your listener to realize I'm not sure that I would actually like this in real life in practice. Mm-hmm. And that's why humans are so cool because <laughs> we have imaginations and we can role play and that this could be something to explore in but in, in a safe way yeah in a safe way that's like i would i just want to think about this and maybe let's let's play with let's that let's role play right? let's you talk tell about me it as if mm-hmm. that had happened yeah mm. right or i can be the sexy stranger that i can feel right? you could jealous of later <laughs> yeah <laughs> or something i don't know yeah, yeah. no yeah I, I, absolutely yeah. Sure. that's yeah. a great idea right there you get to be both sides of it right mm. like yeah. you go yeah. to the store and you know buy a wig or some different clothes or yeah. like do something different right? like i'm this new person that we're yeah. just hooking up with and then later you can be you being jealous of that <laughs> yeah and then getting turned on by it, right? mm-hmm. amazing like, yeah yeah I, i love i love just being able to explore those options mm. without it having to be 
I want you to go do that if I'm not sure that I'm comfortable with that. And that, I, cause you know, the worst thing you could do would say, I think this is hot. Your partner goes, cool, check. Mm -hmm. I will go do <laughs> that. And yeah. then it's actually super upsetting to yeah, you and yeah. damaging mm -hmm. to your relationship. You don't want that, but there's a whole world of other things you could try that could be, could be super hot. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, my personal experience is that sometimes when I see other people desire my partner, mm -hmm. it makes me, it reminds me, I think mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. about how that they desirable, are desirable. Yeah. they are, yeah. right? And sometimes, especially when you've been in a relationship for a while, sometimes you you may get so familiar mm -hmm. with the partner mm -hmm. that, you know, you're seeing their dirty laundry, you're seeing <laughs> their, yeah. you know, yeah. the, the, all of that clutter that they've left on the table and stuff like that. And sometimes you forget that. And I think that sort of, that switch in perspective mm. um, sometimes can be very erotic, mm -hmm. at least from my personal experience. Yes. Yeah. For sure. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hit the nail on the head. Totally. Yeah. So last bit is a speed round. It's actually oh boy. <laughs> called our quickie but goody section. <laughs> okay. it, yeah. it happens in all of the podcast episodes Great. that I do. Great. So it's a trademark. So all of you guys have about just two seconds to spontaneously. Ah! Two, two seconds. Yeah. Spontaneously <laughs> respond okay. to my prompts here. Do, so Amazing. Do, we, do we each do it? Or yeah. Are we all yeah. do it at the same time? Do it. Yeah, yeah, you don't do it at the same time. You each do it. You each do it. I can, I can like sense boop, 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 the nerves boop, 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 boop. Yeah, We just got to start. Right. We got to start with Listen, you. Listen, we're all in, we're all drama people. We can okay. freaking improv. We can zip zap okay? zap. We can zip zap zap. Okay. okay. But you got to start. But hold on, hold on. To Today, what we're going to do for Quickie But Goody is a never have I ever. <gasps> oh. The oh. jealousy edition. Oh. Okay. okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So okay. I'm okay. going to lead okay. you each with a statement and I'm going to say never have I ever whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you guys just spontaneously say oh, I have gosh. or I've never. And if you want to quickly, obviously just if you have and you quickly want to tell a story, that's okay. cool. If you don't okay. want to, it's fine. We'll go on to the next one, right? Okay. All okay. super spontaneous. So I have or I've, I've never. <laughs> I've never. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, you okay. know how to play. Okay. Like never, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And you never, right? You played this. You played this. It's good that we've gotten okay. enough alcohol in you guys by now. <laughs> yeah, this. yeah. It was all <laughs> a plan all along. <laughs> <laughs> you apply right. them with alcohol, I guess. Okay. All right. This is an easy one. Okay. Never have I ever felt jealous of a famous celebrity i have i i, I, I don't know i don't know that's a hard one i have i definitely have. A anyone you anyone i was just particular? thinking i saw recently the menu and i saw anya taylor joy and i was like that bitch is so hot <laughs> and she's so hot right now Right. And I want to be her. Mm. Mm. Oh, also, yes. my partner yeah. and I call her hot fish because her <laughs> eyes are like over here. She's a really hot fish. Yeah. Mm. No, I am remembering now. I did mm -hmm. feel so jealous when I found out back in like middle school that, uh, Gavin Rosdale and Gwen Stefani got together. And I was jealous of both of them because I liked both of them. God damn it. God <laughs> Sounds about right. Okay. Yeah. I was jealous of Evan Rachel Wood when I found oh. out we have the same exact birthday, like oh. same year. Oh. Even like we're the same exact oh, age. No. And, really? And being like, oh, she's so much more successful. Mm, that's rough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Never have I ever experienced social media envy. So you've seen somebody's life on social I media. I certainly have. I mean, that's, that's, isn't that what social media is for? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think there was any other option on social media. I mean, there's so many beautiful pictures of people in Hong Kong. Also, like everyone is taking gorgeous pictures of themselves at mm. Hong Kong Disneyland. Ugh, and I'm how like, are they all so perfect? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and we did a special media day with Cayenne. I don't know if you know who that is. I I don't. I yeah. Don't she's a singer? Know. Yeah. She's, she's a, a singer. And she's okay. super hot. <laughs> and she, and we're seeing her all over the subway, the, the metro, and she's super hot everywhere. So I'm super jealous of her. <laughs> she got a Prada bag yesterday and a Burberry bag and a Disneyland 
tree. Oh my God. <laughs> Christmas tree. And I How want dare that tree. She? We have to pay How for it and she doesn't have to. Okay? <laughs> Anyways, that was five seconds. <laughs> I'm sorry. How okay. dare she? <laughs> okay. Never have I ever been a jerk to someone because I was jealous. Oh God, times oh, two really? thousand yeah. percent. Come on. Yeah, I think we've all talked about this already. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I threw away a Metamorse toothbrush once. <gasps> oh shit. A Metamorse toothbrush. Oh shit. I was so jealous. <laughs> it wasn't mine. Was it yours? No, no, no. It wasn't oh. yours. No, it wasn't mine. yours. Come <laughs> on. It, it was not mine. I can't no. say her name okay, on the podcast. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, I think fine. I'll... Oh, Shh, hey. oh, yeah, I know who it is. So we'll talk about it later. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay. Never have I ever known something would make a partner jealous, but still went ahead and did it anyway. Oh, yes. Definitely or, have. Oh, yeah. Yikes. <laughs> I have, but like... Uh, I can't think of an example, but I'm sure that I have. I've done it from that place that you were mentioning of like, why can't they be more evolved? Why can't they get over it? I'm just going to do it. Whoa. Oh, I see. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Like see, they're being immature. Of, yeah. It's mm. not a frustration. Mm. I'm sure I've done it, but I can't think of any either. Mm. But I bet I have because I'm, you know, petty. <laughs> or at least I was once upon a time. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Okay, never have I ever stalked an ex oh, on social geez, media. Emily is the oh. worst at this. <laughs> Emily is like a professional. Sorry, but I, I stalk our mutual ex. Okay. And Emily stalks, is, stalks my exes that I don't stalk anymore. I have stalked your exes as well. Just because I'm interested in seeing what's happening with them. <laughs> because mm-hmm. we're, yeah, I don't a know. Deep Wait, interest. but Jace, have you? <laughs> I don't think you have really. I ever? Uh, no, no, I'm gonna say no. Even though, like, sure, I've looked to see what an ex is up to, but there's like a different feeling when it's like that. I'm stalking because I'm yes. no, I'm no, stalking versus their, just I'm stalking my ex because I'm angry at them. Right, that's and what I'm I mean. Like, it's different. But you, you feel worse though because yes, their life looks feel perfect worse. on social media. It's that's never a good idea. That's yeah. the problem. It does it, look right? perfect. My therapist called it digital self harm. It is digital wow. self harm. Yeah. yeah, and you, I'm glad that you guys chastise me about it every <laughs> single time. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's it, guys. Okay. I know oh, wow. it's I'm over. Know. You guys wow. can breathe now. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I know yeah. you so much better. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> well, I hope this is helpful, though, because I do think on our podcast, many people do perceive like, oh, you've been doing this whole non-monogamy thing for so long, and you're so great at it, and you're so you're perfect like, at it, yeah. and you know all the right things to do in relationship. Oh, yeah. But like, we struggle the same way we're petty we Mm -hmm. have Mm -hmm. weird stuff that comes up so hopefully it's more humanizing than anything for sure yeah it's it's very human it's very normal it's very common definitely Um, yeah anyway thanks so much Jay this was a blast. and Emily so great. for joining yeah. me today. This was a great discussion. It really was. Lots of valuable tips I think for the people listening and great tools, great strategies. Guys, I hope you found it helpful. Listeners, I would love to hear from you. What did you take away from today's episode around managing jealousy? Find me at Hello Sarah Sense on Instagram or drop me a line at sarahsense.com. I would love to hear from you. And if you want to support me and my work to build a more sex positive world, I would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, if you shared this podcast of you wrote me a review. All of those things help me a lot. And thanks for listening and see you on the next episode of Better in Bed. Thank you to everybody for listening. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of Better in Bed with Sarah Sense. The best place to share your thoughts with other listeners is in the episode discussion channel in our Discord server, or you can post about it in our private Facebook group. You can get access to these groups and join our exclusive community by going to patreon.com slash multiamory. In addition, you can share with us publicly on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. Multiamory is created and produced by Jace Lindgren, Emily Matlack, and me, Dedeker Winston. 
Our production assistants are Rachel Shenowork and Carson Collins. Our theme song is Forms I Know I Did by Josh and Anand from the Fractal Cave EP. The full transcript is available on this episode's page on multiamory.com.